Even at Louisville, and Ken Clay has held high-profile posts at the Kentucky Center for the Arts and the Louisville Urban League. Ken is also co-author of Two Centuries of Black Louisville, and he joins us now to talk about that and his Louisville life. Welcome. Thank you for having me. First of all, tell me a little bit about your background and your experience here in Louisville. Well, I am one of the few native Louisvillians who decided to remain here and pursue my life and my career. And uh, I've been involved in numerous uh, activities and events uh, involving the community. Um, I worked at the Kentucky Center for the Arts, which was one of the most uh, biggest highlights of my life. And I was there when it opened up. I stayed for 23 years, and now I do consultant work and planning and uh, programming for other entities around town. Talk about the genesis of this book, including your co-authors. Well, the book um, kind of got its idea back in uh, 2005, and, and it was uh, eventually published uh, in 2011. So it took us about five years to put this book together. Uh, uh, Mervyn Albusman is one of the co-authors. Uh, the late Dr. Blaine Hudson uh, at the University of Louisville is, is likewise one of the, the co-authors. So we worked, uh, we worked diligently uh, on putting this thing together and it became a, 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 a work of, of love. And we were so pleased when it came out. We all celebrated immensely and we're still celebrating. You lived some of the history that is detailed in your book. What did you learn as you researched for the publication? Well, you know, I was aware of many, many of the individuals that we talk about in the book. And I learned a lot about the, the strength, the power that the black community had, particularly back in the older days, you know. The, the free black community in Louisville uh, was essential to the growth and maintenance of uh, of uh, equality, you know, and negotiations with those in power. Uh, that was always interesting. The, the whole Walnut Street period really fascinated me. I, I, lived, I lived through it, you know, um, and I remember the, the clubs, the entertainment, the activity on Walnut Street. But I also remember that Walnut Street was more than the entertainment center. It was a, really the nucleus, the soul, the pulse of Louisville's African American community. You, uh, this book is subtitled A Photographic History. What is the value of the photographs in telling this story? Oh, the pho photographs are immensely uh, valuable. Uh, there are over 420 photographs in this book. And uh, when you see the photographs of the individuals, the events, the people, the activities that took place, uh, back in the days over the, over the period, then you get a more, you get a real sense of what it was like living, you know, 50, 60, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're very valuable. You started the Midnight Ramble series at the Kentucky Center. If you could go back and just assemble a super group made up of Louisville connected artists, who would you put together? Well, wow, that's interesting. I did that just about a week ago. Uh, yeah, I would, I would think I would have to go back and, and pick people like uh, Preacher Stevens, who, a guy who played spoons around town, uh, a fellow by the name of Joe Cook, uh, who was a, a, a tremendous vocalist on Warner Street back in the day, Marianne Fisher. Uh, I would have to likewise pick uh, a guy that plays piano, he's still around, Ray Johnson. Uh, who plays uh, around town now. So there are numerous people that I would select. And it would be so many, I couldn't put them all on one show. Mm -hmm. I'd have to develop several shows to present all of the wonderful, wonderful, talented people from Louisville. You mentioned earlier one of your co-authors, Blaine Hudson, who passed away last year. This month, UofL is going to honor him posthumously, uh, inducting them into the Hall of Honor. What would you like to share about Blaine Hudson as your friend and your colleague? Blaine was a very unique individual. His, his loss is, to this community is uh, indescribable in terms of what the loss is. He contributed much to this book and certainly to the University of Louisville and to the community. And he, his work, his life is represented in the pages of this book likewise. He is here as the two of us are. What do you and your co-authors hope that people will take away from this book? Well, I want them to take away uh, a realization of 
the sacrifices that were made to get us from where we were to where we are today. And also I want it to be used as a, an inspiration for a younger generation who need to have some kind of guidance and who need to know from whence they came, perhaps they can find out then which way to go. Ken, thank you very much. Thank you.